Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Uh, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 8. Uh, this is going to be part of the uh, Take Heed series, part 8b. All right, let's go to Luke 11 and verse. All right, verse 5. We're going to do the part where the, uh, if you haven't listened to part eight, please do so. This is going to be part B. I missed something yesterday. All right, Luke 11 and verse five. <clears throat> and he, Jesus, said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Now, they're talking about bread, you know, loaves of bread. Why is he asking for three? Why not two or four or five or seven? Why three loaves? Think about that. Verse 6. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall uh, answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut. For my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say Unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And if anyone that asketh receiveth, and him that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And it says, If a son, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Now, why three loaves of bread? Personally, I I kind of wonder if this is sort of like a uh, like a parable in a way. I mean, after all, let's take a look at something. All right, let's go to John chapter six. Maybe this will throw some light on the direction that I'm trying to bring this subject to. John chapter 6, verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. He saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Now, if you don't know what a penny is, was a uh, back in those days was the an average day's wage for a, an unskilled laborer so you're talking you know an unskilled laborer 200 days worth of wages of bread now, that's a lot of bread people so there must have been a whole bunch of people there verse 8 one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so that the men sat down in number about 5,000. Now you know there's women and children there too. So there's... You know, if there's about 5,000 men, how many women and children are there? 
And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets. Twelve baskets? Why twelve? One basket for each of the twelve tribes of Israel? Just a guess. And filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves. Now there's some bar uh, Bible scholars that will tell you that the number five has reference to grace. That, I don't know, could be. Um, so 12 baskets with the fragments of the 12, I'm sorry, the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracles, uh, the miracle that Jesus did said, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. See, when Jesus comes to be the king, uh, they're not going to have to come and take him by force. He's going to come by force and take it. Verse 16, And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered in a, into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. Yeah, if I saw somebody walking on the water coming towards me, I might be afraid too, but... But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land, whither they went. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one whereunto his disciples were entered, that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence camest thou hither? Now this is sad. Verse 26, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. You know, I have heard of missionaries going to Africa, and as long as a home church supplies rice and beans and cooks them and feeds the natives, they will have a full church. Everybody in that entire village will be praise of Jesus, praise of Jesus. But when the missionary leaves and, and the food doesn't come anymore and the missionary comes back six months or a year later, the church is nothing. It's dead. I have heard that so many times. They even bring wood over and build a church. And when they come back, all the wood's been dismantled and they used it to build their houses. I, I've heard that from so many different people. And everybody keeps saying, oh, we need to do missions in Africa. Well, you know what? As long as you feed them, your church house is going to be packed. But when you quit, quit from feeding them, they leave gone. Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, 
which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now this is really good advice. A really good question, and Jesus is going to give them the answer. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Oh, did you know that believing is a work? Uh, that's what Jesus says. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Wow, that's works. And there's probably people who will tell you that this is works-based salvation. Believing, prayer, repentance, obedience. Really? There's, there are idiots out there. Perhaps they're devils. I don't know. This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father give you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. The three loaves. Remember the three loaves in Luke 11? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, maybe? I don't know. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but I should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then he saith? How is it then that, um, that he saith, I am come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent him, which hath sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh to me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, 
He shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Yeah, you know, there are actual uh, people that accuse Christians of being cannibals because of this. I mean, you know, the Lord's Supper, right? Take, eat. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do that, right? All right, in Matthew 26 and verse 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Symbolism, people, right? All right, back to John 6. In verse uh, John 6, 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Oh, so now we're vampires and cannibals, right? That's what some people say. Verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? In other words, man, this this is a hard thing to understand. Verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And people, any of you that don't believe in election, I suggest you read John chapter 6, verse 65. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Did you catch that? John chapter 6, verse 66. John 6, 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Verse 67, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, 
and one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. All right, go back to Luke 11, verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Three loaves of bread, the bread of life. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, I don't know. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give me. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Is there a connection there? I don't know. Is it connected to the marriage supper of the Lamb? I don't know. You know, I just, uh, I just thought it was strange. Three loaves. So, all right. So that's uh, the end of Luke 11, part A, 8, part 8, uh, part B of part 8, I should say. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.